for being here. Welcome to First Presbyterian Church. And as you can see, we're in a different room today, so we want to thank you for <laughs> your patience and understanding with us. A couple of announcements this morning. Uh, today is Youth Sunday and Graduation Sunday, so congratulations to all the graduates. And during service today, you'll read liturgy and participate in the service that was completely written by our youth here at First Presbyterian. Our VBS uh, Bible school this sun, uh, summer will be May 22nd from 12 o'clock to 3.30 p.m. Uh, today is the last day to order a t-shirt if you would like a t-shirt. However, registration for VBS will go up until the day before VBS, <coughs> May 21st. If you have any questions, please reach out to the office and just use more information. Next week is the last week for youth, rooted, and children's Sunday school. Uh, before the break for the summer, so wanted to throw that out there. New members class starts next week. Our <coughs> is Pastor Taylor, uh, if you'd like to enroll in that. A quick announcement, if you look in your bulletin, the insert, uh, Matt Garrett will also be graduating for his master's degree online. So we'd like to say congratulations. <laughs> From going forward, we will be using this room until the sanctuary is repaired. We will be using those double doors to your back for the main entrance. And if you have to use the bathroom at any point during the service, please use the kitchen door to go in and out of door. the hall. Are there door. any other door. announcements? <laughs> Thank you so much. stand for the call to worship. <laughs> Our praise to you we sing across the earth. With gladness, with gladness we serve you. You welcome us into your presence with open arms. Lord, Lord you are God. Created in your image, we are yours. We, we are, are your people and the sheep of your, your pastures. pastures. Your steadfast love endures forever. So, so with thanks in our hearts, so let us worship you, God.
join me with the call to confession. We acknowledge we all have shortcomings, so we come before you to ask for forgiveness through our confession. All right. Please stand for the prayer of confession. Good morning, Jesus. Good morning, Jesus. We must confess our sins. We drift away from you and build barriers between each other. We experience joy and forget gratitude. We experience sadness and are blinded by frustration. Draw us closer to you and to one another so we may feel and share your love in all things we do. Amen. God's better is bigger than our sins. Know that through him you are good and you are forgiven. Peace is among us. Please share it with your neighbor. Peace be with you. After he made them breakfast on the lake shore, Jesus asked, Jesus asked, Peter, do you love me? Peter was surprised at Jesus' question because he had been with Jesus just from the beginning. Yes, Jesus, I love you, said Peter. Feed my ship, sheep, the people I love you. Jesus said to Peter, then Jesus asked one second time, Peter, do you love me? Yes, Jesus, I love you very much, Peter answered. Jesus told him again, take care of my sheep, the people I love. Then Jesus asked a third time, Peter, do you love me? Now Peter was really wondering if Jesus had heard his answer. And then he said, my teacher, you know all about me. You know that I love you and trust you. Feed my sheep and the people I love, said Jesus. All right. Who says I love you to you? Your mom? Who says I love you? Ella. 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 Who says?
Now it's on? Okay, yay. Yay. Okay. Please join me in the Jesus said, feed my sheep. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God.
Test, test. What would you do if your friend blatantly lied to your face? What if he said, I'll be there for you and never showed up? I'll keep an eye out for you and watch over you and then fell asleep. <coughs> would you still want them in your life? Would you still go back to them asking them for a favor? <coughs> well, that's Peter and Jesus' relationship. Peter is the friend that said, I know you, but when asked about him, when asked about Jesus, Peter said, I don't know Jesus. He said that three times. Peter also said, I'll take a step out into the water with you, and then looks away and falls in the water. Peter said, I will keep an eye out for you, Jesus, while you sleep, but he fell, while you pray, but he fell asleep after looking out for Jesus. So why is it that after so many times of Peter messing up, Peter making a mistake, Jesus keeps coming back to Peter? He keeps coming back with love and relentless drive to be with Peter. Why is that? In this passage, there's a couple different forms of love that is talked about. In the Greek translation, Love can mean several different things. And the way Jesus describes his first love, the way he says his first question, Peter, do you love me? This is not natural love built by a family being around each other. This is not friendship love. This is not a, a love to go out and do something. This is a love that is so strong and such a large commitment that you would sacrifice your life for that person. It's called agape. It's a form of the noun agape. And Peter, uh, Jesus asks Peter, Peter, do you love me in that way? And Peter says, yes, Lord, I love you. But he doesn't say it in a, the way of a strong commitment that I would sacrifice my life. He says it in a way that describes friendship and says, Lord, I love you as a close friend, as a best friend, but I do not love you as a strong commitment that I would sacrifice my life for. Why does he say it that way? It's because he knows he's already broken that promise. Earlier in the Bible, Peter already broke that promise by denying Jesus three times and saying, I don't love Jesus that way, but I love him as a friend. And so Jesus says to him, feed my sheep. And then he asks again, Peter, do you love me? In the same way, a strong commitment, do you love me that you would sacrifice yourself for me? And Peter says, Lord, I love you as a friend. And then Jesus asks him a third time, Peter, do you love me? But this time he switches it. He switches to the form that is less strong, less love, and says, Lord, do you, Peter, do you love me as a friend? And this time Peter's hurt. I would be hurt too if someone I loved asked me three times, do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? And Peter says, Lord, you know all things. You know I love you. And that is true. Jesus knows all things. He knows Peter's heart. He knows that despite Peter's mistakes, despite Peter's lack of doing things that need to be done, he knows Peter's heart is still pure and true and that in his heart, he still loves Jesus. And so he says to Peter every single time, Peter, Feed my sheep. Take care of those that I love. He says that multiple times, relentlessly saying, Peter, feed my sheep. Now, all the disciples are here, and they're all hearing this. They've seen all of Peter's mistakes. They've seen what Peter's done. And they see Jesus coming to Peter 
again saying, do you love me? Take care of my people. Take care of those I love. So me and my family, we like to go on trips. We like to visit my grandparents in Michigan and all of our family up there. We like going to Mississippi and visiting my family there. We like taking trips to the beach with all of us, hang out, get some sun, relax in the ocean, but we don't bring our entire family. We leave two things at home, our cats, Stella and Lana. So what do we say when we leave them? Do we just leave them without food, without water? Let's let them fend for themselves in the house? No, that's cruel, it's mean. We ask somebody, hey, feed our cats while we're gone. Take care of them. They need somebody there. Now, we also don't go into town and drive down the road, roll down the windows. Hey, you want to watch our cats for us, random person? Or, hey, cashier at the grocery store, you want to watch our cats for us? We're going out of town. No. We don't ask random people to do these things for us. We don't ask random people to trust, and we put our trust in them to care for something we hold dear in our hearts. So why would Jesus ask Peter to care for something he loves if he didn't trust Peter? Peter made all these mistakes, but Jesus said, that's okay. You're human. You can make mistakes. I still trust you to carry out my will and love the people I love, even though you're not perfect. That's okay. And all of the disciples see this. All the disciples, they've messed up. They've made their mistakes. They're seeing this. They see Jesus coming to Peter, and there he's t Jesus is telling Peter, it's okay. So the disciples are saying, it's okay for me too. I've made my mistakes, but I'll continue doing what I want to do for Jesus, because I know that's what he wants. Sends a message to the disciples, and they get invigorated and go out and do and take care of Jesus' people that he loves. And this message is not specifically for the disciples or for Peter. Yes, they were there. Yes, Jesus told them, to, told them this. But this message gets reflected back on us. We love Jesus. What does Jesus tell us to do? The number one commandment. He's always telling us, everybody. It's, he's, he's pretty much every story he's doing this. It's to love other people. To take care of his people to love each other, and that's what he tells us to do. We've seen that Peter made mistakes, but he was also the only one to get out of the boat and walk towards Jesus. He was the one that last week we talked about, he jumped out of the boat, running through the waves, trying to fight the force of the waves, fighting the sand beneath his feet as it plowed away. He's losing his step, he's running towards Jesus, he's the only one. Jesus sees what's in his heart and trusts him. Jesus sees what's in our heart and trusts us to take care of his people. We're supposed to love each other. How do we love each other? Do we simply say, I love you? I love you. I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. I love you guys. I love you guys over there. I love those kids in the back. Is that good enough? Some people it might be. Dr. Gary Chapman says that there are five love languages that people have and they can express their love to others. They are words of affirmation, acts of service, gift giving, spending quality time, and physical touch. Can these things be used to show our love for others? I think they can. The first one, acts of service, I thought that was fairly easy to come up with an example. Acts of service, we do this all the time at church. We have missions, we do all sorts of stuff to help people. Acts of service, showing our love for somebody else. Somebody who can't go to the grocery store, we can run out and get some groceries for the week. Somebody who might not be able to mow their lawn or take care of their grass, we can do that, we can help out. Somebody who needs something from us, we can always do that, we can always help out, that's awesome. That's fairly easy. It's a good way to show love to those. The second one goes fairly hand in hand with acts of service, gift giving. Sometimes our friends and neighbors have lost everything they hold dear. Recently there is a tornado 
that blew through the town right next to Statesboro. It tore people's houses up, they lost their treasures, they lost everything that they hold dear, held dear in their heart. So what did everybody else do? They went together, they got together, and they built new homes. They offered food and shelter. They give them the gift of safety. That's very close to service. They said, here you go, take what I have, hope you can do better with that. Showing love by giving somebody something they need. Words of affirmation. Pastor Taylor does that every week up here. Telling somebody, telling all of us, hey, you are good enough for Jesus. You are enough. You have done a great job doing what God wants. You are awesome. I appreciate you. Pastor Taylor gets up all the time and says that. Brings a smile to my face sitting in the back. And I really appreciate her showing her love to me and everybody else here. The fourth quality is an interesting one. Spending quality time with each other. Showing love by just sitting next to a person and being there with them. We also do this every Sunday. Coming into church, sitting next to each other, being here with each other, listening to each other, hanging out. We're showing love to each other. That's awesome. But sometimes there's people who has sadness, fear, and anxiety, and something that's gripping their, their life to the point that they feel suffocated. And what do we do? We sit right here and we listen to them. We're there for people who need it. We're always here for a shoulder if they need to cry on. Being here for people who truly need it, making sure that they are heard and they are listened to, showing the love for others just as Jesus wanted. And the last language was a little hard for me to think about. Physical touch. How do we show love through physical touch as a church? And I was sitting here and I was thinking, I was thinking, and I was thinking, I said, ah, I don't know. And then I thought about every morning, we walk in, we walk up to somebody and say, hey, it's good to see you, and you grab their hand, shake their hand and say, it's good to see you. Hey, how's it going? Grabbing their hand. Okay, Brady, I'll get you too. <laughs> Being there, greeting somebody, pulling them in close, saying, it is so good to see you. I'm glad you're here. How are you doing? It's awesome. And sometimes you need a hug. Sometimes people need a hug. I want to read you a poem by Jan McIntosh called Jesus Hug. Have you ever had a Jesus hug? Do you know what one feels like? If you've never had a Jesus hug, I pray one day you might. A Jesus hug is different as far as hugging goes. It's a little taste of heaven here on earth below. Only those who love the Lord can give a Jesus hug. It conveys God's mercy and grace and unconditional love. Those who give out Jesus hugs always seem to somehow know just when you're in need of one to make your spirit glow. And if you ever need one, I hope that I will see you so I can give you a Jesus hug like someone did for me. The power of touch and the power of love is much stronger than anyone can anticipate. But Jesus knew. Jesus knew that we might make mistakes. I make mistakes. But he's still saying, go Austin. You go, you take care of my sheep and love them and help them and be there for them. I've failed many times and Jesus still keeps coming. Peter failed many times and Jesus relentlessly kept going. And we will continue to fail and Jesus will continue to be here for us because our imperfect love is good enough for God's perfect love. And that's true love. Thank you. All right. Please.
stand for the affirmation of faith. We have a little rap slash poem that we made, so get ready. God is our Lord and caring Father. He gave us the earth and holy water. Creator of earth and heaven above, he always give us nothing but love. He sent us and done down to us, not interested in money or lust. He sacrificed himself for the people of earth. To him, love and happiness always come first. We believe he will forgive our sins. We trust in him. Her love always wins. So, God blesses us with many things. At this time, we would like to ask you to give a portion of what you've been blessed with back so you can help another fellow child of God. Thank you.
At this time, we'll be hearing the prayers of the people. We will take a moment of silence during the prayer and we will ask you to announce any prayer that you have during that time. Almighty Father, many people wish to speak to you. Some do not need anything, but they ask that you stay by their side. Some still have pain on their hearts and are reaching out to you for comfort. Others are blessed by you and wish to offer thanks. At this time, we ask that you listen to our prayers, both spoken and unspoken. Here are collective words as a prayer of gratitude, a prayer of safety, and a prayer of hope. Your son taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Thank you everybody for joining us today. We appreciate you being here and the youth appreciates you being here as well. May your lights always shine for Jesus today and tomorrow and the day after. Thank you so much. Peace be with you. Thank you.